topics, public policy, veterans affairs, retired and active. We go on and on. We do so much. America's Heroes Group Roundtable. We are globally connected with and partner with Military Family Matters Caregiver Keisha Jackson is with us, and we are always pleased to have her on. Keisha, how are you? Well, how are you? Good. Let me make sure everybody knows Keisha Jackson, 22-year retired Air Force veteran and family caregiver for her late mother who had stage 4 and operable lung cancer. Keisha started learning about caregiver resources to share with other caregivers. And uh, we just uh, appreciate what she is able to do and the information she gets out. Also, uh, with Keisha, we have Mike Carducci. Uh, Mr. Carducci, how are you today? I'm wonderful, Good. and thank you for having me on, you and Miss Keisha, and thank you for what you're doing. Thank you so much. Uh, our guest, Mike, 31 years, civilian federal employee with the U.S. Department of Defense and a family caregiver. And what we want to discuss is something that's very important for both of you, uh, misconceptions uh, about uh, the uh, male caregivers, misconceptions about male caregivers. Uh, that's something that uh, a lot of people wanted to talk about. They are, or perceptions. This is something we want to know. And uh, our call-in number, of course, is 312-374-8130. Uh, Keisha, why don't you start us off? Okay. Mm -hmm. I wanted to um, have this topic this month. I'm, this month, I know that March is National Women's Month, but um, on mm -hmm. March the 4th, it was actually nat National Sons Day. And National so Sons Day. And with being yeah. a caregiver for his late father, mm -hmm. um, it kind of ties into one of the topics that you had uh, just in your last call when you were talking about, um, like, the PTSD, mm -hmm. uh, that there's, like, there's 40... 40% of um, the 40 million caregivers now are men. And mm. so a lot of times we talk about caregiving from a female perspective and you're not, you don't really hear it from a, um, from a male perspective. So I thought it would be good to mm -hmm. introduce that. And also um, because um, Mr. Carducci, his father, he'll, he'll talk more about that um, in terms of Alzheimer's and dementia, but um, the Department of Veterans Affairs had reported an increase of like 166% of veterans with Alzheimer's over the last decade. So I thought this would be a, um, a great topic to talk about, um, even whether it's a person actively caring for someone or maybe a spouse, um, children or parents that are listening, to help them to understand that a lot of this is coming in terms of like um, dementia and Alzheimer's and the veterans is because of traumatic brain injuries or because of uh, PTSD and different things like that. I think that makes a, a very important issue, uh, Keisha, and I'm so glad that Mike is here uh, to tell us more about this. Mike, go right ahead, please. Well, um, my, my father served. Um, he was an immigrant from Italy, okay. and he served, and uh, he became a 100% er, disability-rated veteran. Hmm. So we actually had a lot of support from the Veterans Administration in taking care of my father. Before Mike, before you go further, that in itself is interesting. He was an immigrant from Italy. How old was he when he came here? He was 18 and a half. And when did he go into the military? Uh, shortly thereafter. Yeah, uh, I thought so. Mm -hmm. He, um, my, my dad was uh, very much uh, in, involved in, edu well, not involved in education, but he had a thirst for education. Mm -hmm. And he was told that if he went into the military, he could fast-track a U.S. U.S. citizenship, but also as part of the new GI Bill, he could go to college and get equivalency degrees here that he had over in Italy. In Italy, he at 18, he had had basically uh, master's degrees. He spoke wow. seven languages, um, mm -hmm. uh, had advanced degrees in mathematics and physics. <laughs> so that thirst for... Um, knowledge and the GI Bill uh, put him right in the service, and so his 100% uh, rated disability was through um, his service, uh, obviously. Sure. Uh, in the military. What what uh, was he in active duty? Yeah. Mike? Yeah. What what war? That was. 
He was in. Uh, it was during the Korea War. Korea War, yeah, that's right. Okay. However, he wasn't in Korea. He was in Yugoslavia. Okay. All right. Yeah, a lot of people know about that. Yeah, yeah. that's that's true. So he uh, tell tell us what exactly did happen with your dad. Um, he was on patrol, and uh, I don't know specifically. He didn't know specifically what had happened. He just knew that he uh, collapsed, and he woke up on a ship coming back to the United States. Hmm. And he spent eight years, I'm sorry, 13 years, in and out of uh, a mental hospital because of the... Um, uh, uh, because of the injuries sustained. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So from a perspective of what actually happened, it is pretty much unknown. Wow. That is something. That really is something. Uh, and and you, uh, you were the secondary caregiver for your dad, right? Yes. My wife is, is here also listening in. Oh, and okay. She was the primary caregiver. Okay. And, um, you know, I had that pesky day job. <laughs> and, uh, oh, that's cute. Uh, when I was done with my work, I would come home and give her whatever break I could, and I was also basically her care the caregiver's caregiver. And it was a it was a tag team that we did. But I must point out that she did probably ninety five to ninety seven percent of the heavy lifting with my father, who was her father in law. Um, yeah. and, and I mean, she's just an amazing, amazing person. Well, I think there's more amazing than that, Mike, because uh, your wife's name, I think, is Bobby? Yes, it is. Yeah, okay. And and you co-host uh, a weekly podcast for that caregivers. That is absolutely correct. Yeah. Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, absolutely. Tell, tell, the name of that is what? The co the, uh, it's called Roger That, uh -huh. and Roger was actually my father's name. Wow. So wow. it actually honors him, mm -hmm. our, our podcast, uh, trying to help uh, the caregivers through the heavy haze of, of dementia. And uh, we've had um, some amazing guests. We've had um, researchers from the United States and the U.K. We've had elder law um, attorneys, um, uh, folks. Uh, from CEOs of caregiver activities, and um, we're very, very proud of our podcast. I think that's great that you would do something like that, and uh, also your wife. Yeah. Our call-in number, uh, somebody wants to mention this, is just great, 312-374-8130. Uh, Keisha Jackson, Air Force veteran and caregiver for her family. And uh, Mike Carducci, 31-year civilian federal employee with the U.S. Department of Defense and a family caregiver. And we're just so pleased to have them both on because the uh, uh, the information they put out is just uh, uh, a, a great... Actually, um, to yeah. be honest, mm -hmm. um, I actually did some military time also with the Army. Oh, uh, good. Okay, tell us. I, I mm -hmm. was a reservist on active duty, so... Okay, mm-hmm. I, I wasn't retired, and I wasn't in the line of fire or anything mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. But I a actually do have that soft spot for the for the veterans, as I am one myself. I got you. So you were a reservist on active duty. What unit were you in, Mike? I I was with the um, uh, Intelligence Center and Training School in Fort Huachuca, Arizona. Okay. All right. That's something. Okay. <laughs> yeah. The, Fort Huachuca has got a lot of. Uh, Publicity in a number of things over the years. Yes. Yeah, that's exactly right. And I would like to point out that uh, sure. we met Miss Keisha at in actually in Chicago at the National Caregivers Conference in November last year. Oh, you did. Okay. Yes, that's how we uh, got to know Miss Keisha, and I got to tell you, she is just a lovely, lovely person with a lovely heart. Well, that that's just great. That's just great. Keisha, what did you think of Mike? 
Oh, um, um, <laughs> I, it's kind of hard to say it. It's not say it like this, but you know how you can say love at first sight. But yeah, just, right. Don't disrespect yeah. to Bobby at all because she's equally just as sweet. But when you have people, especially when it comes to your family and your parents, that you are the ones that are are their caregivers, and because we are born for our parents to care for us. And so mm-hmm. when you meet people who are caring for their parents or caring for their in-laws, there's this immediate connection sometimes that you get. And because with dementia and Alzheimer, it is such um, in, an important topic. And I think that although Alzheimer's or dementia is, is behind mm-hmm. heart disease and cancer, I believe that it is cost more, like $259 billion dollars, um, a year for this. So um, I'm really excited to be able to have Mr. Carducci on the line and be able to talk about it and talk a little bit about his experience, his background, the radio show. And, Mike, if you could just tell a little bit about maybe some of the um, the, the experience with your dad, you and Bobby had with your dad. Well, um, uh, one of the things uh, in Italy, he grew up on the east coast of Italy, And I didn't find out this until well late, uh, not too long before he passed away, maybe a year or two before he passed away back in 2009, that as a teenager, him and a friend would sit with a rope uh, and the couriers for the Nazis would go up through their town and they would clothesline the couriers off the motorcycles grab the Mm -hmm. courier pouches and take them to the Allies. And this is something that I did not know until just before he died. And I asked him about it. I said, Dad, why didn't you ever say anything about this? And he looked at me and says, you had to do something. He was just so non-assuming and so non-pretentious. It was absolutely amazing. Wow. And this blew my mind. That's amazing that they would do that, because that was... That uh, unquestionably was a risk. Well, yeah, yeah. they had been shot at. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, but uh, yeah. so you know, they took over the town, the village, the farms. They were pushed out of their their house. Um, so th- there was that from the very beginning, from living in Italy. So then mm-hmm. serving in the army. Mm-hmm. He, um, I mean, it was besides his thirst for for education. Mm-hmm. He. Mm-hmm. Um, had had a sense of a, a sense of duty um, yeah. uh, with the United States. Uh, with with him, he had a a bevy of uh, of issues. It wasn't just the dementia. He had Parkinson's. He had um, congestive heart failure. He had a valve replaced in his heart. He had COPD. He had. Um, Swallowing issues. My wife had to puree all his food, mm. and um, he had to have all his liquids thickened. Um, and and a, a little known um, uh, ailment that my wife has, has diagnosed as stubborn old Italian disease. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it funny. wasn't he wasn't an easy. Case. Yeah, I, I, well, how could he be? When you think of the things he went through, the things that he did, yeah. come, come on, Mike. I mean, my goodness, there's no way, Yeah, you know, that your dad could. Uh, so he, um, but he, he was always so positive. And even though he didn't have the life that he had thought he was going to have with all his education and things of that sort, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, he always says, I'm so lucky. Wow. I am so lucky. Anytime I needed a job, I was always able to have a job. Yeah, yeah. I was able to get married. I was able to raise two sons. I'm so lucky. Isn't that great that he felt that way? And I and, guess, I and guess that he goes was. Back to what yeah. said about him being so non pretentious. Again, uh, Bobby, the, uh, you're the co host of Roger That, uh, a weekly podcast for caregivers. That's got to really be interesting to do that well it's one of the ways one of the many ways i decided after taking care of my father-in-law um and knowing how difficult it was and knowing that i had fallen into that hole that keisha sometimes mentioned or i call it walking into the brick wall having no idea what i was getting into 
I knew that I wanted to support caregivers going forward, and I actually started doing that through writing. Um, I've written a couple of books uh, in support of caregivers. I lead a caregiver support group. Um, I speak at caregiver conferences and in my local community, doing whatever I can to help caregivers. Um, Sometimes I hear from caregivers who say that having done it once, they could not do it again. If asked to do it, I would do it in a heartbeat. And I also tell people, having done it, I wouldn't make the same. I wouldn't make the same mistakes, but I'd make different ones because <laughs> every day is is a challenge. And mm-hmm. what works today may not work tomorrow, or definitely won't work tomorrow. Um, and I kind of drew Mike into this, and um, I, now we have this, and uh, together we're supporting caregivers. Which I just think is great. And what you're doing, a lot of people, uh, of course, this is what this show is about. Uh, the uh, American Heroes Group and bringing up things like this that people wouldn't even know about. But dementia cost the United States $818 billion, with a B. With a B. With a B. Billion dollars per year and is estimated to increase at an even faster rate than the number of diagnoses. That is so true. Yeah, and for people like yourselves to do this. And uh, a lot of people get hung up on the, you know, the aging baby boomers, but the early onset is growing by leaps and bounds also, mm-hmm. which is not the elderly. It's people in their 30s and 40s and 50s. Isn't that something? It, it is amazing. Yeah, I have a, um, I have a co-worker. Yeah, that, Keisha. Mm-hmm. I, have, I had a co-worker. Um, I think he was like 45 years old. And, I mean, very, very sharp in everything. And then one day we found out that uh, he has frontal, I think it's frontal uh, temporal, um, I can't think, it's, it's FTD. But he just, now he's at this place where he was doing everything. He was out leading. And now his wife says the only thing that she could do is give him a cell phone for him, and he just plays games on his cell phone, and that's like all he can do. Wow. It's so sad. Yeah. Yep, but thank goodness there are people such as you folks that, uh, you know, understand the need, and that's why we wanted to uh, to really have something about the uh, perceptions of male male caregivers. You know, a lot of people don't realize how many folks like Mike there are and others who are helping people, not 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 only family members, but uh, just other male folks that are in need, right? Yeah. 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 That's right. And I, I do want to mention that um, um, yeah, we're going to have Bobby on a, on the show one um, one month as well. Oh, okay. That'll be yeah, great. Well, definitely. Yes. Yeah. That will be great. Well, I want to thank uh, the three of you, and I, I, I just think it's, it's great, uh, you know, what we know, of course, uh, what Keisha Jackson has been doing, and uh, we just uh, love that. And uh, Mike, uh, <laughs> I think it's great what you're doing. Just continue to do it. I love that. Roger that. I think that's just great. Yeah, it, it's Roger that dot show. And also, you had mentioned um, about the um, uh, different months and the days. Uh, this is actually, March is actually National Brain Health Month. Oh, okay. All I right. don't know if uh, you were aware of that. No. no but um, we're, we're so pleased and so mm-hmm. honored that we were asked by Ms. Keisha mm-hmm. to, to come on the show mm-hmm. and absolutely honored to be on the show with you, sir. Well, thank you so much. That is great. We certainly appreciate it. 